Hello, friends, and not yet friends, you want to make these golden Vietnamese-style baguettes with thin, crispy, crackly crusts and fluffy insides? Okay, let's get started right away here on Mary's Test Kitchen. Set your stand mixer bowl on your kitchen scale, hit the tear button, and add warm water. 310 milliliters or 10.8 ounces if you prefer American units. Check that the temperature is above 105 degrees Fahrenheit for good yeast activation, but not above 110 because we don't want them to get overactive and make the dough too alcoholy. Or worst yet, kill the yeast at even higher temperatures. That would be a crying shame. Then add a teaspoon of sugar to feed those helpful single-celled fungi. By the way, I've tested this with instant yeast, which technically you don't have to bloom like this. However, I always do for demonstrations to show you what active yeast looks like. And I recommend it because you never want to go through the whole process of making the dough and the grief of your dough not rising and the stress of retracing your steps and then leaving an angry comment about how you followed the recipe to a T only to sheepishly realize later that your yeast was dead to begin with. You can probably use traditional dry active yeast as well. In that case, use the same amount or a tiny smidge more. After five to 10 minutes, it should look like this. If it doesn't, do not pass go. You probably have to go buy new yeast. But in most cases, you should be able to keep going by adding 510 grams or 18 ounces of bread flour. My research over the years had me believing that light, airy, Vietnamese-style baguettes must use low-gluten flour, maybe with rice flour mixed in, but it never worked out for me. Only when I tried the opposite route, using bread flour, which is higher in gluten, did I get the texture I was going for. In particular, I'm using Robin Hood Best for Bread Flour Homestyle White, which is made of hard wheat, 100% Canadian wheat. I also tested with all-purpose flour and it did actually make a satisfactory baguette. Like almost perfect, but not quite there. So keep that in mind as you use what you have. Now with that layer of flour playing interference with the yeast, sprinkle over salt. As usual, I'm using pink because it's pretty, but regular table salt or sea salt is just fine too. Now let's take it to the stand mixer. Pop in your dough hook to bring this together. And if you don't have a stand mixer or bread machine to help you, let's be real, you're in for a workout. Is that a pro? Is that a con? It's up to you. Whatever you use, the dough will be all raggedy at first, but if you squeeze it together, it should stick. Some parts might seem dry, but that's normal. Slowly ramp up the speed to the highest speed you can go without your machine rocking too much or the dough getting flung out of the bowl. For me, that's speed four and let it run for 10 minutes. If you're kneading by hand, you can knead using the traditional kneading method, and honestly, it will take two to three times longer. I used to find this very relaxing back in the day when I made everything by hand in my early 20s, like from making bread to whipping mayonnaise to even sewing my own clothes. It brought me such satisfaction and chronic tendonitis. So, you know, each to your own. After 10 minutes or a great deal more of time manually kneading, your dough should look like this. It will be quite tacky and it even might stick to your hands somewhat. It should look pretty smooth and be a little uptight. So we're gonna let it chillax, minus the chill. Ideally, your room temperature should be on the warmer side for this bread. Cover it up for privacy while the yeast does its thing eating the sugars, producing gases, while all the gluten loosens up and molecules connect for about 30 minutes. Afterwards, you can see how this puffed up. The dough is softer than before, and we're gonna knead it once more, same as before, ramping up the speed to speed four for about 10 minutes. This is what it should look like by the end of 10 minutes. We've worked it pretty much to the edge of tolerance. Now for the main proof. Cover it and let the dough sit there in a warm, draft-free, luxurious location for one hour. It should puff up to about double to triple in size. Don't you just wanna squish it? Then go ahead. Press out the big bubbles. and take it out and weigh it. 
Divide that weight into six even pieces. And with each piece, I like to knead it a little bit to get rid of any gas pockets and form it into a nice neat ball. Neatness is optional. Cover the dough balls and then take a moment to fill your water kettle and turn it on. You'll need some hot water soon. Now select the first dough ball that you made. It will have relaxed the most, making it easiest to roll out. To create our baguette shape, roll up the long flat dough into a log while pinching the sides in. Try to make it a tight roll. And pinch along the seam. You want the outside to have some tension. Then with your hands kind of arched over so your ring and pinky fingers are holding the ends down, roll the dough so the pinched seam gets smoothed down and you develop this baguette shape. Thicker in the middle, sloping to narrow tips. And place it onto your non-stick baguette pan with the seam side down. Let's see that again. In case you're wanting to get the same pan as me, which I quite like after buying two others that weren't quite perfect, I have an affiliate link for you in the description box. Otherwise, you can make your baguettes on a regular parchment lined baking sheet, though I have to say it's not quite the same. And when you're going through this kind of effort, don't you want them to be perfect? Anyways, whatever pan you decide on, keep your shaped baguettes covered as you work on the rest. Especially since I live in a dry climate, I want to prevent the dough from forming a dry skin on top, which will really mess with the way it rises. In the past, I used a damp, lint-free towel to cover rising dough. But in this case, I find a plastic wrap works the best. So cover it loosely so the baguettes can rise easily under there. We also want to create a nice, humid environment for these to rise. Prepare a metal baking dish with a couple cups of hot water, just soft foil. Then put this in your oven on the bottom rack. Or put the pan in first and then pour the water. Yes, that's probably safer. Then set the covered baguettes on the middle rack above and let them proof for 45 minutes. Afterwards, carefully remove the pan of water and the risen loaves as well. And then start preheating the oven to 475 degrees Fahrenheit. By the way, I'm assuming it's going to take 15 minutes for your oven to preheat, like mine does. So if yours does take longer, you can adjust the proofing time versus preheating time so that the total is 60 minutes altogether. Anyways, when your oven reaches temperature, turn your kettle back on. You're going to need some more water just before the loaves go into bake. Which, by the way, don't they look beautifully puffed up? I mean, gorgeous. About double to tripled in size by now. Carefully uncover them. I find it usually comes away pretty easily, and I can even hang this plastic wrap up and use it again. Spray the risen loaves with a fine mist of water. And get a nice sharp non-serrated knife, preferably freshly sharpened, and moisten the blade with a spray or two as well. You can go across and do slashes, like in my previously seen simple homemade French bread recipe, which was actually based on grocery store quote unquote French bread, and then real French people got understandably upset about it. But moving on, you could also slash down the length at a bit of an angle for this lovely shape. Now without any more delay, okay, maybe stop to take an Instagram picture or two to record your handiwork for posterity. Then spritz the loaves evenly with water. Back to the oven, place your metal baking pan and do not, under any circumstances, use glass instead. Add 100 milliliters of hot water from the kettle. 
and place the unbaked loaves onto the middle rack. Give it a couple last second spritzes, then close the door. Bake for 18 to 20 minutes, but definitely take a peek through the glass a couple minutes early. The hot water underneath helps to make this humid oven create a nice crackly crispy crust, but it will also evaporate completely before the bake time is up, so the crust can develop a lovely golden brown color. And listen to that. Steam escaped to the sides as I did that and burned me some. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for. Fluffy, pillowy clowns on the inside. You will not be able to resist taking a bite. Or two. Or just demolish that first baguette all in one go. I know I couldn't. Just save some to take a picture and tag me on Instagram so I can also admire your handiwork. That would just make my day. Maybe make yourself a bun mi sandwich as nature intended or anything else you like because these are your golden brown, crispy, crackly, soft and fluffy Vietnamese style baguettes and there are no rules. Tell me, what will you stuff inside your homemade baguettes? I'd love to hear all about it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching my friends. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already for more delicious recipes that hopefully didn't take as long to develop here on Mary's Test Kitchen. Oh, and feel free to leave a recipe request. If you want more bread recipes, please check out my bread recipe playlist. It goes real well with my vegan cultured cheese playlist too. Bye for now.